All right, so now that we've clarified that you do want to move forward with Backbone, let's get started in this lesson with the installation process, and we'll figure out what dependencies are needed and when. All right, so the first thing we need, of course, is the Backbone library, which you can reach at backbonejs.org. Now, this is not the only tool that you will need. Backbone is just the structure, it's the framework, but it has its own set of dependencies. If we scroll down just a ways, we can see Backbone's only hard dependency is a tool called Underscore, also created by these guys at Document Cloud. And Underscore is actually a very cool library. It's just a utility belt library. So it fills in a lot of the gaps that currently exist in the language. So you can see things like it has a reduce method. It has pluck. If you're like me, you've recreated that method many times. Well, with underscore, that's provided out of the box. And it also offers a variety of things, including a very simple templating engine, which can be really useful for simple projects. So we have backbone, we have underscore. If you don't want to use underscore, there's also an alternative called Lodash. And Lodash has the exact same API, but it does have some performance improvements involved. In this case though, we're going to keep it as simple as possible and just go with the standard, most common defaults. So we'll stick with underscore. Next, we need a DOM library. And you're most likely going to be using jQuery. That's what we will be using in this course. But once again, if you don't need all of the flexibility that jQuery provides you, as well as some of the browser support, you might want to take a look at septo.js. Similar to Lodash, it has the same API, but it just cuts out support for some things like IE. Once again, though, we're going to stick with Backbone, Underscore, and jQuery in this project. So let's go ahead and get all of this set up. I won't make you watch me, but if you're working along, go ahead and download jQuery, download underscore, which you can do at the top right here. And you want to download Backbone as well and bring that into an empty project folder. And when you're ready, let's move forward. I will go ahead and skip to that part. Okay, and now we've switched over to Sublime Text 2. You can see I've created a JS folder where I downloaded those three libraries. And I also have a beginning index.html file. So we need to make sure that for now, we load these in the correct order. So we want to make sure that we have backbone script source. I'll use a little shortcut here, js backbone.js. However, we also want to have underscore preceded as well as jQuery. And that's because underscore is a dependency of backbone. Now you also may need to import an additional library called JSON2 created by Douglas Crockford, but you'd only need to do this if you need to support older browsers that don't implement the JSON API, and that would be Internet Explorer 7 and below. In this case though, that support has gone quite a bit down lately, so we're not going to worry about IE7. Now that we've imported these scripts, let's view it in the browser and make sure that we do have access to Backbone. I've loaded the page in the browser, and I'm going to open Chrome Developer Tools by right-clicking and choosing Inspect Element, or alternatively, I can press Shift-Command-C, and that will automatically bring it up, or I can hit Command-Option-I on the Mac, and that will bring it up as well, and I'll switch to the console. Now, if we want to test to make sure this is working, we should have access to this new global backbone. I'll run it, and sure enough, we do see backbone, and we have access to our collections, the history, events, backbone.sync, all of that good stuff. We also have jQuery if I run that, and we also should have access to underscore. Great, so now we've installed everything, we have all of our dependencies set up. In the next lesson, let's actually get started learning this thing. See you then.